No, we're not looking at real estate. We're looking at the virtual estate within the metaverse, and people paying real money for virtual properties. But is this all a worthwhile investment? Well, it isn't without its benefits. Just looking at the case where somebody paid roughly half a million dollars to be a virtual neighbor to Snoop Dogg, you've spent a small amount just to be near someone who is probably worth millions, or tens of millions. I don't know, I don't keep up with celebrities. That and if the value of these properties goes up, the lucky buyer can sell it for a higher price, coming out on top. On top of all this, virtual properties require less maintenance. Unless you have a power outage, in which case the property will vanish until the power returns. Now, power isn't the only downside. It's a small one, but it's not the only one. Sure, there is the chance that Facebook will suddenly go out of business, but that is also pretty minuscule, almost non-existent. But there is always the chance that a single hacker can completely destroy your investment overnight. I mean, Facebook has been hacked before, and there is always the chance that the metaverse can be hacked as well. Additionally, we've all taken a financial hit during the pandemic, so trying to spend money on a virtual house rather than a real one is a questionable decision. Considering the fact that properties in Texas are much cheaper than these properties going up for, I don't know, $450,000? Sure, you might now be a virtual neighbor to Snoop Dogg, but unless he's spending eight hours per day there, then the chances that you and him will be best buds are lower than your house being deleted by a hacker. Looking at this, I don't think this is a good decision, but I can see why folks are going for this sort of thing. It's not entirely an unintelligent decision, and can possibly earn some good financial returns. But as for me, I'll simply enjoy my metaverse alternative, known as reality.